If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's me, T1 Glistener Elf, with a quick little story for you about how I almost was disqualified from an FNM of all events. But first, I need to give you two quick little pieces of context. The first, for those that don't know, FNM, Friday Night Magic, is not judged at the same level that a Pro Tour or a Grand Prix or Worlds or anything like that is. It's judged at something called REL, Regular Enforcement Level, as opposed to Competitive or Professional REL. And that's the reason why you don't have to have a judge to run an FNM. Your TO can do it. The store owner often is all that it takes. The rules that govern what you do at a regular event like an FNM are in something called the JAR, Judging at Regular. It's a very short little document that's available on Wizards' website. It's just basically, let me summarize it for you really quickly. There are two things that you do. Well, actually, the philosophy first is you're supposed to teach people to play. That's why the rules aren't super duper strict. At competitive or professional REL, it's assumed that everyone there knows the rules, knows the gist of it. At regular, that assumption is not made. And so if a person makes a mistake, say messes the board up, you just help them to fix it. You don't it, give them a game loss or a match loss, you help them to fix it. And you give them a warning, hey, don't do this again, this is why, yada yada. Now, that's one. The other thing that you can do at regular REL, though, is you can still disqualify people. Say, for example, a person draws an extra card off the top of their deck. Well, on its own, that's certainly not worthy of getting you disqualified. But if it was intentional and you know it was intentional, then yeah, you can disqualify them. Say it's a person who keeps doing it over and over and over and over and it's their twelfth time this night. No, <laughs> that's very much not allowed. Alright, so that's your first bit of context. We're at FNM and the REL is not super strong. Love that rest, by the way. Alright, the second piece is Wizards of the Coast is very worried all the time about magic being treated as gambling. And that may seem weird to people who play this game all the time, but when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. When you go out and you play, I don't know, baseball, there's not really any luck in baseball. There's the weather, <laughs> if it's an outdoor venue. That's, that's about it. If you want to play uh, football or soccer, whichever you want to call it, there's not really any luck in that. But with Magic, there is definitely luck. There is absolutely luck. Uh, just how, what order are the cards going to come off of the top of your deck? Just that on its own is a substantial amount of luck. And if you want to be treated as a legitimate sport, that's something you have to worry about. That's the, going to be the same thing for certain esports like Hearthstone or even Magic Online. Now, that being the case, you do what you can to try to minimize the amount of luck. And anything that goes over the absolute minimum puts you at more of a risk. Here in the, the reason for all of that, by the way, the reason that they're so worried is that here in the United States, which is the largest market, uh, certainly largest as far as an individual country is concerned, in most of the U.S., with the exception of professional sports, because they have a large lobby in Congress, gambling is not allowed. And also, I, I guess I should say lotteries, if they, if they count, they're allowed. Sort of. Okay, but you can't do that with, say, poker in most states. Magic the Gathering doesn't want to be poker. They want to be treated as a legitimate sport. And that means they don't want to have elements of gambling. Well, anything that you add on top of that, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but this is important. This is important to understand. Anything on top of that is treated way more seriously than what you might think of as being worse. At round 15 of Pro Tour Ixalan, uh, Luis Cot Vargas's competitor, Yao Z-I-L-E, worried about mispronouncing that, was disqualified for using an improper method to determine who wins. Basically, they had gotten to time, they'd gotten to the end of the extra rounds, and they were about to do an unintentional draw, so they talk about 
you know, would you concede to me, would you concede to me? They have that discussion. And you can use during that the information you already have in the game. You can use the board state, you can use what's in your hand, but what you can't use is what comes off the top of your deck. And Yao apparently did that. He apparently started revealing cards saying, I need to hit this card and am I going to find it next turn, next turn, next turn, to try to determine it. But you can't do that. Now, you might think, I might think, that's, you know, a game loss or a match loss. Match loss seems fine, right? No, they treat it as a DQ. He was DQ'd from the event. Because any luck that you add can, be, can push it closer and closer to that gambling definition. And they don't want any bit of that, so he was disqualified. That's why on Twitter you saw so many people saying, why is this penalty so harsh? Why wasn't it just a match loss? Was, this is why. Okay. Now that I've given you that much context, <laughs> I'm sorry that took so long, but here we go. Now, it's FNM, the venue is Dragon Star Hobbies in Athens, Georgia, and we had an L1 judge in there. Uh, I assume he was an L1 judge, he was judging the event, so presumably at some point he, um, he showed the store owner. Okay, now, you don't have to have a judge for FNM, but if you have one, cool, extra little benefit there. And I was not on camera. This was back when I used the camera to just show basically the top table for every event. And I was not at the top table that round. I was not doing very well. Last round of the event, so round four in this case, and my opponent, Leith, is... Well, one, he's a, at the very least was then a much better player than I am, probably is now. He was playing uh, Jeskai Control, it wasn't called Jeskai back then. But he, we had gone to time uh, against my five color elementals deck. And we made it to the end of rounds. And we did not know, neither he nor I, even though we had been playing for some time, that you could not use a die roll to determine who wins the match. That seems so obvious now that I know it, but at the time we didn't realize it. Well, this judge walks by, what are you doing? And I just said, I was honest, I, I didn't realize I'd even done anything wrong. We were using a, a die roll to see who wins the match, because, you know, otherwise we're going to draw. And, oh, by the way, another little bit of context. At that store, whoever won, it, you got one pack, one prize pack per win. And if it's a draw, no one gets a prize pack. So it made sense for one of us to concede to the other. Um, so that's why we had that discussion anyway, why we wanted to do that. Well, the judge says, nope, that is very much not allowed, you're disqualified from the event, and the store owner's like, whoa, 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 what just happened? He comes back from, he comes from around the, the counter. What just happened? <laughs> I guess he thinks we cheated or something. The judge explains that, and the TO looks at us just like, what are you doing, guys? <laughs> he tells us, you're not disqualified, just don't do it again. Now, determine using a non-random method. He, he basically makes us redo it where, and at this point, since I'm the one that goofed, I, I recommended we do the die roll. I said, no, you, you, you take the pack, dude, you got this. Because I was about to get disqualified. I guess technically he was too, but you know, whatever. All right, so that, you, you cannot under any circumstances use any randomness outside of what's naturally in the game to determine the victor of a match. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that's true regardless of where you are, even if you're in a place where gambling is much more acceptable, because in our largest, in Magic's largest market, you're not allowed to. So, it just know that for later. Know if you are newer to the game, if you've never come across this before, you can't flip a coin, you can't roll dice, you can't look at the top cards of your deck. Uh, when I Later on at another LGS, I had someone tell me, don't play rock, paper, scissors. And I was like, okay, well, well I mean, you, you can't play rock, paper, scissors to determine the outcome of a match, but he wouldn't let me play rock, paper, scissors to determine who goes first. And I'm like, why? What, what, what difference does that make? That seems random. He's under the assumption that rock, paper, scissors is not truly random, which technically is true. There are better rock, paper, scissors players than others. There are tournaments for rock, paper, scissors, Rochambeau, where there are some people that more consistently make it to the top that because they are actually better players. It's, it's a little bit like poker. It's a bit of a mind game. Alright, I am way off track now, but that's, that's pretty much it. 
I may also be stalling so that you can get a little bit more of this this action on camera. Yeah, Jigglypuff is a stupid character. Alright, that's about it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. And if you, if you do still want to stick around and see the conclusion of this one, well, here you go.